Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing the Tycom Robot Vacuum. So this is the Tycom G8000 Pro Robot Vacuum with a mopping function as well. So it comes all in one with a mop and vacuum. It also is capable for Google Alexa, has Wi-Fi compatibility so you can control it with the, an app on your phone. It has tons more features. We'll try and go over as many as we can in the video today. So I've actually already had this unboxed and been using it for quite a while now. I got the black one. This comes in black and white, but this is a very useful robot vacuum and uh, it came at a really great value. I, if you follow me on Instagram, make sure you do. Links will be down below. Go to my link tree, it'll have links to all my social media. But uh, on Instagram and Facebook stories, I try to share uh, cool deals when I find them, whether it's some cool new product or something I've never seen before or a really good sale on a robot vacuum. For years, I've always wanted a robot vacuum. I have two dogs and a whole house and a full-time job and I do this and my wife works full-time in school. So all of that put together leaves us with not as much time as we'd like to clean. And so in comes a robot vacuum. So this is the Tycom G8000, like I said before. Overall, it's been really great. I've purposely avoided doing a full setup on it because I wanted to do that with you guys together today. So what I did is we just set up the uh, home base where it's charging station, whatever you want to call it. And I've set that up and I've kind of, you know, tucked the wires up and out of the way. And then it does struggle to go into the home base sometimes, like when it's cleaning, it might bump it. And so then it like pushes it to another side of the room. So a while ago, I actually got these uh, rug corner grips because I have a rug in our hallway and the dogs are always running around and it's sliding all over the place. So I got these guys and they hold the rug down fantastic. So I just threw one of these on the bottom of the charging station and now the robot doesn't push it around. It just plugs right into the charger and have no problems with that sliding around. Like I was saying, so I just, put it on the charger, let it charge, and hit the power button to start it. And it also actually comes with a little remote. So it's got like an auto button, a home to go back home and charge. Uh, we got a play pause. So if it's in the middle of cleaning, you can hit pause, go clean up. Maybe it, you missed some wires that you were supposed to tuck away, things like that. And then you even got arrows. So if you're like, hey, drive over there if you don't want to pick it up and then set it down somewhere to do a spot clean. You can drive it around like a remote control car, chase around your dogs. Shh, I don't do that. This little bullseye button here, that's your spot clean. This is your edge clean, so if it'll just go around the edge of the room. That's really useful if you're starting to get like dust in some corners and you're like, hey, just go ahead and clean up the corners real quick. The edge clean button is great for that. Down here in the bottom right, I think that's the uh, mop function. And then the bottom left here, that looks kind of like a fan blade. That is actually the vacuum suction level. So it actually tell it, hey, go to high suction level, low suction level. So it does have an automatic feature where it will automatically increase the vacuum suction when, on, when it knows it's on carpet and then kick it back down when it knows it's on regular plain solid floors. That can also help if you're like, hey, it's uh, this carpet's a little extra dirty run through it a few more times. You know, you had kids coming through with dirt on their shoes, whatever it might be. On the robot itself, it has a power button, a home button. Power button turns it on to go do cleaning. Home button gets it back to its home base for charging. And then down here at the bottom is a Wi-Fi symbol to set it up to uh, connect to the app. And today, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's get started on that. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get the Tuya Smart App. That's the app that will control this. So go ahead and hit, click Install. Once it's installed, we'll go ahead and hit that Open button. Hit Agree to the Terms and Conditions. And then um, if you have an account, you can log in. If you wanna just sign in as a guest, you can. But today, I'm gonna to go ahead and sign up. So I'll put all in my information in there and uh, we'll get started. So it'll actually ask you for a verification code when setting up your account to verify that you're giving them a valid email address. Now we can create a password. And then it'll ask you if you wanna allow it to follow it for software bugs, things like that. And then it also says, hey, what about ads? And so I'm gonna check the one for maintenance, but not the one for personal ad recommendations. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and tap the little plus, or we can hit add device or the plus sign in the top right to add our device. 
to be able to discover it, what you'll want to do is press the, let me show you. So you'll press your power and home button for three seconds. Wi-Fi reset, ready for EC mode connection. All right, so now we'll go into our app and we'll hit add device. And it's searching in the top here. This is the point where I kind of got confused on to what it was saying. It was say, turn on your Bluetooth. And I was like, my Bluetooth is on on my phone, but um, it also required one more permission. So permissions here, we need to see nearby devices. So for my Samsung phone, I had to allow it to see nearby devices, which made it so that it can see the vacuum. And then it immediately started working. The rest of the setup process went smooth, but uh, make sure, yes, your Bluetooth is on, but also allow it to see nearby devices. Now we can say, add it. We'll give it a Wi-Fi password. Now it's going to connect to our Wi-Fi. Hopefully that'll help it get firmware updates, things like that. We'll find out what else this guy can do. Wi-Fi connection successful. All right, now we can see our uh, home screen, our clean time, our cleaning area, residual electricity. So that's how much battery's left. So I actually just pulled this off of the charger right now. So it hasn't done any cleaning right now. Um, map. So I can actually create a map of my home. We have smart mode, edge cleaning, spot cleaning, random. So if you have like carpet and it didn't quite get everything with its, uh, or its uh, organized style that it does, you can tell it to do a random clean there. And then we have our manual mode where we can tell it to go. We can tell it to go around on our own manually, just like on the remote with the arrows here. And then we can even set up schedules. That's one nice thing is we can actually set a schedule on it. So every morning at 6.45 a.m. we are going to do um, just a cleaning. We'll just say every day, no notification, cleaning switch. I don't know what that means. Or we can just hit save in the top right corner. So just tell it what time, when we want it to do it. There we go, and it switches on cleaning. I'm assuming that if we say cleaning switch off, uh, it's uh, like, hey, you know what, start cleaning at this time, but if you don't get done by this time, you gotta stop and go back home. And so that cleaning switch off means it'll stop cleaning, head back to charging. So we've created a schedule for it, and let's see what more it has to offer. So suction, we have our max, strong, normal, gentle on there. So I. I'll probably keep it on max just because I want to get everything up. I haven't had it run out of battery cleaning our home. We have just less than 2,000 square feet in our home and it's split into two floors and this really only spends most of its time down on the main floor. So it does less than a thousand square feet and it can do that on a single charge with no problem. Water control. So on the back of it, it does have a water reservoir. You pull that out and you can see we have a water reservoir. The little cap here it does say to make sure that that cap is sealed when pushing it back on. Kind of understand what they mean. There's a bit of a lip to it. There we go. So this is the mop pad that it came with. It is just Velcroed on there. There's also, you can see three notches here. And then on this cloth, there are three little segments. So you'll slide it up. Let's see if I can do it while looking rather than not looking for the first time. So that'll actually give you a little bit of a lip up on your mop pad so it doesn't get caught on things as it's going over different surfaces. I know in my home there's a lot of different like thresholds where it'll go from like the original 100 year old hardwood floors to some new laminate floors, things like that. And so this needs to have that lip so that it can make those transitions without a problem. I must say, I've been impressed with this guy on this little mop bottle here. It has little rubber things here as well as a little hole up here. So I imagine it uses like air pressure or something. So it pushes air in here to force water out through these little buttons that will then drip into these trays right here on the mop itself that will then disperse water for your mopping function. Um, so this guy will go inside the Vacuum this, just like that, and you're ready to mop while vacuuming. All right, back to the app. Sorry for the sidebar there. Um, back in our app, we were in more, 
And so we looked at suction, water control, cleaning records, so we can actually see, now that I have the app, it doesn't show my previous record, but now that I have the app, it'll send me like, hey, it cleaned every single day this week, or hey, we did an extra cleaning this day at this time kind of thing. So um, a lot of times my wife and I will actually grab this and carry it upstairs and have it do a run of our upstairs through the bedrooms and whatnot. We do have to keep an eye on it because Downstairs, we're pretty good about keeping cords and things like that up and out of the way so it's not getting tangled and pulling wires and cords around, getting sucked into blankets, stuff like that. So one other thing to keep in mind is if you have like charging cables and stuff like that, you wanna make sure that they're tucked up and out of the way. Um, otherwise it does grab onto it with these little round whiskers that it spins around to guide. You can see that they spin them in here to bring everything into our blade there. So we do want to make sure that all of our cords and things are picked up so that it doesn't get tangled into those. And to help you with your cable management, they actually give you a little bag of five zip ties to help tuck uh, wires and things away out of the way. It also comes with a spare cleaning cloth, whiskers, HEPA filter, and uh, we'll talk about this a little later. Um, this is their boundary strip. It's, uh, I think it's just a magnetic tape that it uses to say, hey, don't go here, otherwise you'll get stuck, you'll get tangled in cords. Maybe it's the entrance to the kid's bedroom where all of the Legos are and it's just gonna get clogged full of Legos. We don't wanna do that. Back to the app, sorry about that. So, we can look at our cleaning record and then seek robot, what is this? Judge the position of the sweeper according to the sound made by the host. So maybe uh, it's stuck underneath the bed, underneath the couch and you can't find it. So use that to uh, help you find your uh, robot there. And then it also shows us our life of our accessories. So of our uh, filter, we have a HEPA filter built into these. And it does, like I said, come with an extra HEPA filter, as well as side brushes that it came with extras of those. And then we have our main brush itself. It did not come with an extra one of those, but it does give you a uh, lifetime of how long those are good for. So it'll give you a reminder of when it's time to replace those. Carpet Boost, this is actually a really cool feature that I plan on using now that I have the app. It doesn't do it automatically, but when it goes onto carpet, it turns up the vacuum pressure, and then when it goes onto smooth surfaces, it kicks down to like a normal pressure for uh, smooth surfaces. So that's, I'm gonna turn the Carpet Boost on. We can change our language, volume, and mode. Uh, most of the time, I'm just gonna leave it on sweep, but if you have it filled with water, you can say sweep and mop or just mop mode. So that is pretty much it for the tutorial. Let's go ahead and give this guy a quick test because I just made a small mess just for this video, right? <laughs> Let me show you. I had not yet cleaned the HEPA filter on this guy and I dropped it on the floor and this is all that super fine dust that the HEPA filter has been cleaning out of the air and off of our floors and carpet. So I'm gonna have this guy clean it up again real quick for me, give you a quick demonstration of going on and off of our carpet, things like that. We even got some dog hair on here. I'm gonna have it clean off, but I'm gonna have it just drive on here manually and then do a spot clean. So let's go ahead and show you how that's done. All right, so we got the app opened up here and uh, we're just gonna manually drive it up on there. And now, we go back to our main here, swipe over and hit spot clean. really getting to know this area aside from that one post there it'll drive all the way up to the wall and not hit it so I can come back here and get this spot that it's here to spot clean <laughs> it 
And there you go. That is the spot cleaning feature. Now let's go ahead and have it, uh, see how well we can pick that up. We got some tufts of dog hair that have built up here on this rug. So we're gonna go ahead and manually drive it over here and have it clean those up. Controlling it manually in the app here. And anytime it does bump into something, it knows to not. It'll just back off a little bit. That's pretty cool. Pretty smart, pretty handy. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and show you what it looks like when it gets started. I'm gonna just Use the remote here and push the play button. And then from there, it'll just zigzag its way through the house. Uh, let's go ahead and show you how it does on um, uneven terrain, specifically like the thresholds from like, um, I told you I have like linoleum floor and laminate floor and hardwoods and carpet. So let's go ahead and do some of those transitions. So right here you can see the transition from the laminate floor to our carpet or our rug in our living room. Go ahead and send him forward here. Like it's nothing. Has no issues with these transitions here. And here we can see a pretty uh, rough transition from our laminate floors to our linoleum floors here. And then just to the left of that, we have a uh, padded rug. Let's see how it does here. I already know it's gonna do great, but let's just show you how it handles it. So it does struggle with that rug, but if you come back, it usually will do that. It'll come back and forth. But also, as you can see, can fit under our refrigerator door, no problem. And as you can see here, we have another kitchen mat. You may not be able to tell very easily, but this is significantly thicker than these other mats we have. These ones are, you know, maybe the thickness of a finger, while this one, this one's easy, easily, you know, two to three times that thickness here. I don't know how well I can show that, but uh, let's go ahead and have it drive right up on it here. No problem. Still does it and has no problem fitting underneath our cabinets. With its low profile, it can fit on top of this extra thick mat and also underneath our cabinets. Let's go ahead and show you the ledge detection. So if you're running into stairs, things like that, we'll show you what it does for that. All right, you guys, now here we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate our edge detection. So showing that it knows not to like fall down a flight of stairs. So I'm gonna just go ahead and tell it to drive forward here. Oh, and it sees the edge, stops and backs up. Now, you can see right now, I've actually encountered an issue that this is something that happens in our home and this is something that maybe you'll have to watch for in your home. We have a ledge here and a ledge here and the wheels are here and here. It has high centered itself. So, um, a lot of times I can get it to turn one way or the other, but this time it is really stuck. <laughs> But giving it just a little bit, we'll get it back on track. Now let's go ahead and talk about our boundary tape that we mentioned earlier. All right, and as you can see right here, um, I've jerry-rigged a way to keep this from going underneath my dresser here. Right here, there's not enough room for it to go under. And right here, obviously it can't, but right here it can, and it always gets stuck right there. So I've jerry-rigged a way that it keeps it from going under there until I can make this video for you guys. The edge detection on this, it knows it's hit an edge or a wall because it uses this pressure plate here, whether it's pushing in here, here, somewhere else. And so to do that, you have to bump into the books. And so it's constantly bumping into the books. And so I have to reset them every time. Otherwise, eventually they'll end up under here, not doing any good, and it gets stuck underneath this lip. So today, we finally get to use our boundary tape that came with it. We got our magnetic tape here that came with the package, and it doesn't seem to be sticky at all. It's mostly 
just a smooth magnetic strip. All right, so I've laid down a strip of our boundary tape right here in front of this rug. And we're gonna go ahead and see if it knows not to cross that boundary here. No. Drives right over it. Start automatic cleaning. Oh, there we go. So in manual mode, it will override that. This package or this whole set comes with two of these 3M two-sided adhesive pads. So you'll actually apply those to this magnetic strip and then that's what makes this magnetic strip reusable. So if you use up all of these little 3M pads, you'll just have to get more double-sided sticky tape. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just roll this guy out. I'm not gonna cut this one, but uh, I am going to just basically set it up here in front of it and then double-sided sticky either end. All right, and there it is. You can see it's semi-discreet, but it's definitely a big black line there. If you have like a rug that you don't want it to go up on, you can tuck it underneath the rug, but things like a dresser here that we don't want it going underneath because it's gonna get stuck on this ledge, we're gonna have to just make do with putting it down here below or not having it vacuum in this room. So we're gonna go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna do the edge cleaning so it tries to stay on that edge the whole way to uh, really test to see if that's gonna work and it doesn't go underneath there. So let's go ahead and hit our edge cleaning button. All right, it does go a little bit further under there than I would like, but it didn't get stuck, so we should be good to go. All right, and lastly, we'll show you recharging, how it goes back to the charging station. So we'll go ahead and hit the charging button on the remote here. Start recharging. This will actually spin in circles. You can almost see it here on the sides. There's a bit of reflective uh, IR, infrared uh, readers here on the sides that can then tell where your home base is. So it's gonna use that to help direct it where it needs to go to get back to the home base. And it turns right in front of it. And it just wiggles its way right in. Start charging. There you go. All right, you guys, once it's on the charger, we'll wanna go ahead and empty our dust bin every single time we use it. Uh, this time we only cleaned up a little bit, but that is our dust bin. You'll just lift up on this blue lever, it'll lift up and out. Then we'll come over to our trash bin and we'll push this little blue lever and that'll open up your door. You can then dust off your HEPA filter, uh, the mesh in front of your HEPA filter. If you wanna clean out your HEPA filter, you'll come over on this side and pull on this little door here. You have your HEPA filter here and then we have that little foam mesh that's kind of a catch. You can see all the dust that it's caught. So you can just bang that against the side here, clean that off real quick. Maybe give this a couple of taps, put that back in place. And then your HEPA filter itself has this little blue tab. You'll pull up on that and you can see a dirty side and a clean side. We'll just tap the dirty side down, just release any excess dust and dirt. And then again, we'll put that back in with the fabric tab sticking out and then back on this guy you'll have two little nubs on this end and a single on this side the two nubs go over here and then where you have the little finger hole that's where the single nub is right there you can take it back to the robot vacuum and reinstall it and now we'll just go ahead and drop this straight in like this and then push that lever down to lock it in place and then right here we actually have a little cleaning tool. There we go. We got a little hook right here. That is used to cut little hairs and stuff that may get stuck. Whether it's here in our blade, you can see there's a whole lot of dog hair in there. Or if it's stuck between the case and our fan, we can use that to clean that up as well as we have a little brush here 
to help with cleaning and dusting things off. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys is uh, this couch right here ended up being a little bit too short right here on these rails. So it would actually run into these and get stuck underneath it because it was just, just high enough that it could get under it, but it would also too low so it would get stuck. So I went on Amazon and found these chair risers. I'll link those in the corner here or down in the description. But depending on how much lift you need, you can just twist this guy out and it gets taller for you. And it comes with four of these little chair risers. It's got a sticky pad or you can have two of these. This is just a foam pad that's on the bottom. Gives you the option for the sticky pad on the top or a foam pad on the top as well. I went with a sticky pad just to hold the feet of the couch on a little bit better. It uses a screwing motion to extend it to be taller. Really all I needed was about a half an inch of rise. So that is the Tycom G8000 robot vacuum. Overall, I, I, I love it. I've had it for a little over a month now and it's been fantastic. Like I kind of said at the beginning, I use it every single day. I have it on that automatic cleaning now that I have the app all set up. It just runs itself every morning at the same time. And you know what? The house feels cleaner. Like. Before we would just vacuum once a week with our like full-size home vacuum But this picked up more than that vacuum ever did which is funny because that vacuum is much more powerful But this one has a lot of features to it that do help it But also doing it so often helps to maintain so it makes it better So if we used our big vacuum more often, I'm sure that we would have gotten a similar result, but you know, that's then taking the time out of our day to vacuum the whole home every single day. People don't have time for that, let's be honest. So let's just kind of go over some highlights on this guy. Uh, number one, when connecting this to Wi-Fi, it does have to be 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So if you have a connected network with like a lot of internet providers like Comcast and whatnot, they'll have it to where the five gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz networks are one and it automatically switches back and forth. You may have to separate those if it's having trouble connecting. One hiccup I've run into is um, when it gets stuck or when I pause it or if anything like interrupts the cleaning um, when you start it again it starts completely over fresh as if it hadn't cleaned any of the area prior its memory doesn't like track like hey I've cleaned this area I've cleaned that area I've cleaned that area I don't need to go back there it literally will just keep going in its whatever you know systematic pattern it has but it does that every single time so it's Kind of a good thing, kind of not, because it doesn't remember that. In its cleaning cycle, it'll actually like clean everything and then if it's done, it'll go through and start cleaning everything again until the battery dies or you tell it to go home. One other thing, talking about like the measurements and stuff like that, it thinks that my living area or the area that it vacuums is 600 square feet and it takes about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes for it to clean. But then I was noticing recently that, oh no, that's just like the life of the battery. So on max power, it'll last about an hour, uh, which will do 650 to 700 square feet easily. And then if you take it from max down to strong, it'll actually last for an hour and 15 minutes. So that's a reasonable amount of increase. So if your home is a little bit bigger and you're, it's not finishing a full cleaning cycle of everywhere before the battery dies, you might wanna look at just lowering the suction power on it. On that, the mapping of it, when you look at the map on the app, it's not very accurate. Let me, uh, I'll pull it up right here on the screen for you. All right, so here in the map, in the app, we open up map and you can see that's a really weird shaped place. Um, <laughs> so like over here in this corner, it um, that is a bathroom. For some reason it thinks it's over here, but really it's more over here. This whole area is really weird. Like it does see that there is a wall here, but there's also a refrigerator that sticks out here and like, this is a bay window that it's over exaggerated over here. And this is our kitchen tables. It has it, but it's not square. And then this is our living room. And you can tell like the lines are really odd. These two legs here are the legs of um, a ladder, a blanket ladder we have. So like it at least has those, but like 
The, the mapping isn't great. You get a very rough general idea of the shape of the home, which is fine. Honestly, there's no reason to use the mapping because you can't make like exclusion zones, things like that, which would be really nice though, like to be able to say, hey, because it has that mopping feature, and for this reason I haven't used the mopping feature, is to say like, hey, in this room, don't mop, or like, hey, stay off of this rug, don't mop on the rug, but mop in everywhere else. It doesn't have a way to differentiate when and where it is to mop, because I don't want to get the rug wet. But even though I'm not mopping every day, it's still like the house, I think I already said this, feels cleaner, like it's, it picked up so much. Like the first like week or two that I had it, it like the little dustbin on it was like almost completely full every single day. Like every day it was just like busting out tons of dog hair, things like that, dander, dust, all that stuff is almost gone. So now when I'm emptying it, it's much, much less. Like it's maybe half full every day with dog hair and dogs will always shed. I have two dogs, one is a German shedder mix. So it's just gonna be a thing. Overall though, I can tell a difference and I'm sure my wife can because she has allergies and I don't, but she is definitely much more affected by those and I'm sure she can tell the difference that her allergies are much less reactive now that we're getting our carpet cleaned all the time and we're not constantly stirring up that dust and dander on the floors, you know, once a week. While it does do fine, the house looks okay, this is so much better, it just feels cleaner. <laughs> it's weird to say like it's hard to like really uh, Describe like hey, this is why it feels cleaner But like that is literally the only thing that's changed and it does feel cleaner One other nice thing about this is the app controls are actually really user-friendly I didn't have to like sit there and like fuddle with it and figure out what things mean Everything is very self-explanatory the titles make a lot of sense to me and so picking up the app and using it. I didn't have to refer to the manual for a lot, but I think there was like one thing that I was like, ah, what does that mean? So I scrolled to the manual, but honestly, everything just makes sense. Everything just works. I got it on a timer. It vacuums every day for an hour and it cleans my home. Another thing within the app is the controls are actually really responsive. So if I tell it like, hey, you know, go do this, it responds really quickly. It's not taking a second to like transmit it to China and back. It's literally on my network connected directly to it. So I just send it straight to uh, the robot and I get an immediate response, which is really nice, especially like you guys saw earlier when I was doing the testing, if you push the little directional arrows, it went wherever I send it, which is really nice. Last is suction. That's really the reason I picked this one over a lot of other ones that are out there. Um, this one has a much more powerful vacuum than almost all the other vacuums we saw in this price range. For example, I actually went on Amazon and searched the robot vacuum and then listed it from like best sellers. And the number two best sellers, number one is the iRobot Roomba 9, uh, 694. Um, and it's suction rating or Pascal's is what they're measured in in a PA is 2000, which is actually really good. Comparatively, our, our home vacuum for reference is a, a Bissell vacuum. It's one of those pet something or other vacuums and it's 22,000. So yes, a home vacuum has much more suction, but we do it less often. So this every day, is able to get everything. It doesn't have to work as hard because it's doing it every day. Whereas the one that's going once a week has to work harder to keep it as clean. And so back to uh, the best sellers. Number one is the iRobot Roomba 694 at 2000 Pascals. And this one, the Tycom is 2700. Uh, the next best seller is the Eufy 11S and that one's only 1300 Pascals. So that's a huge difference. This is 700 more than the next top rated, but also those ones are not able to do the mopping feature. Those are just vacuums. This is a vacuum and mop. So huge upgrade from front to back all around. So I was about to post this video and I just noticed I made a big mistake on the numbers here. This vacuum actually gets 4,500 Pascals, not 2,700 which is half of what I was thinking. So 
just keep that when in mind when you're considering this. The Eufy one, it's you know four times stronger than the one from Eufy and more than twice as strong as the one from iRobot, which brings it much closer to a full size home vacuum. And last big like thumbs up from me is I started looking at other robot vacuums and I didn't know to know that this would be something that would, I would think about until now, but the side brushes that it uses to sweep things into the vacuum head itself, there's two of them on this one, while most only have one. And so that means if it's going alongside a wall, it can only go one direction along a wall, while this one can go whichever direction. It doesn't have to think about which way it's going around the wall, which means it can get into corners that it might not be able, other ones might not be able to because of directionality. If you have an awkward corner where there's something there, it has to come around each, it can go either direction to get everything, which I think is a much better feature. It has a much better opportunity to catch everything because those side brushes are on both sides sucking things in as opposed to just on one side I don't know, I think it's a better option that it has both two side brushes so that it can ride walls riding either direction, which also can reduce things like the direction of like where your carpet is rubbing. When you vacuum your carpet, you obviously get those lines in it, which is cool, but you don't always want them to be in the same direction because eventually they're just gonna lay down and you're not gonna be able to pick anything up because it's just laid down and you're just going over it the exact same way over and over. You wanna be able to flip it back the other way and get underneath it from the other side, if that makes sense to you guys. But that is just another awesome feature about this robot vacuum. If you wanna get it for yourself, I've put links down in the description of this video. I am an Amazon affiliate, so using those links do help to support this channel with no additional cost to you. So please go ahead and use those links if you wanna help support this channel. Again, click those links, do your Amazon shopping from there with no additional cost to you. And if you think I've earned it, please consider subscribing. If you like this video, hit, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, leave those in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.